Hello and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts and I'm one of the co-founders of our publication. And joining me this morning from Perth on the morning of 15th of November is the legendary Mr. Tony Sage, who's the chairman, amongst other things, of European Lithium, EUR. Tony, good morning. Good morning. How are you going? And I see you're wearing Perth Glory gear, so I presume you've got a, a good news story you're about to tell the world about, right? Yes, uh, we've uh, secured Daniel Sturridge, so it'll be his first full-on training session. So we've got the media down there, and uh, we'll do a little bit of a press conference with him. All right, good. Well, let's let's not keep you. Um, it's fair to say that uh, you're sitting on a pretty valuable uh, project in Wolfsburg in um, in, in southern Austria. Uh, the the the, the pre-fees that you did a little while ago. Uh, is putting values somewhere between 250 and about 450 million dollars on that at an eight percent discount rate. The the uh, uh, the spodumene's process like a dream, as far as I can tell. Uh, you're in the heart of, uh, of of battery country. What can go wrong potentially with Wolfsburg? Oh look, I don't think anything can go wrong unless there's a, a new alternative to lithium-ion batteries, which. Uh... That's not going to happen. Uh, plenty of people soon, have Tony. tried, uh, <laughs> and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Look, hundreds of billions of dollars have been uh, spent uh, on this technology. Uh, it's going to take some brand new technology a long, long time to overtake it now that the money has been invested. So really what can go wrong is a collapse in the, the price, uh, which uh, I don't think is going to happen. No one... Uh, thinks it's going to happen. I mean, I, I was sitting here six months ago when uh, the hydroxide price was $7,000. It's now passing $25,000. Um, right. And in the PFS, our numbers are very, very robust. I mean, the cost of production is around $6,500 a tonne. So magic profit margin. The biggest advantage, though, that we've got in Wolfsburg is the mine's already built. Um, if I went along today and did a drilling program, um, and found this deposit, I don't think I'd be able to mine it because we wouldn't be able to get permission to dig out uh, that much uh, earth to get the addicts and everything done. But because the mine is there, uh, because the mining license has already been issued, uh, we've got a huge advantage over every one of our competitors in Europe. All right. So talk to us about what uh, uh, the, the future holds in terms of the next 12 months for, for the development of Wolfsburg. Oh, look, uh, we finished just about... Uh, 80% of all the work, uh, we've mined uh, this deposit. Uh, we took out 1,500 tonnes. Uh, we gave that to Dorfner Anza Plan in uh, Germany. Uh, they built a pilot plant. We put 300 tonnes of material through that pilot plant. So we now know we've got a high-grade uh, hydroxide that we can produce. Uh, so the next uh, 12 months uh, basically is finishing the definitive or bankable feasibility study. That'll be done by March 22. And then it's just the financing. And uh, if you look at basically every single uh, equity raise in lithium, they're oversubscribed. So we don't think we'll have any problem raising the capital. And then we just build the plant. Um, like I said, the license is there. Uh, we don't really have to do much past March other than to get the uh, financing put in place. Right. Uh, any particular infrastructure constraints that you're going to be suffering from as you as you build this out? No, no. We're in a, an industrial area. You mentioned southern Austria. It's got a town called Graz. Graz is 45 kilometres away. There's highly the of Arnold Schwarzenegger, amongst other yeah, things. Yeah, correct. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a highly industrialised area. Uh, plenty of land to put the hydroxide plant. The mine is built. Um, we've got Samsung down the road, 45 kilometres away, the biggest uh, battery factory in uh, Austria. Um, we've had talks to them about uh, various things, so, uh, but that's, uh, that's good. Uh, and, and it's in an area of Austria that's got a low social economic uh, impact, a high youth unemployment. So local government, state government in that area really want us to go ahead. Uh, and build the, the mine out and the um, um, hydroxide plant so they could create jobs in the local area. Certainly. And uh, it's fair to say you've benefited uh, from, from some public policy support at the EU level and uh, Austria as well as the state of Corinthia. Is that, is that a reasonable assumption? Yeah, look, it is. Uh, we've already received uh, government uh, funds uh, from Austrian government uh, to develop the project. We've also received some money from the EU 
Um, so look, yeah, very, very supportive. I think if you add it all up across total Europe and the EU, it's about 3 billion euros on offer for EV type uh, um, development. Now, we won't get any funding for the mining itself, um, but we will get funding for the hydroxide plant uh, area of, of the business. So as you know, there's two types of business. One is the mining side and one is then developing the, the concentrate into a hydroxide. Certainly. Um, what motivated the decision uh, to, to go all the way up the curve to be producing hydroxide rather than just shipping concentrates? Uh, the Austrian government, basically, they want right. downstream processing in their country. Uh, they want uh, uh, to create this area uh, into a downstream. So they obviously are looking forward. And once the hydroxide plant is built, maybe someone will build a gigafactory. I noticed Ford is following Tesla and they want to build a gigafactory in Europe. Um, and uh, what better place to build a gigafactory is right next to the hydroxide plant. So that's their long-term view. It's not our view, uh, but um, it certainly helps us um, with government trying to get the um, all the licenses for the hydroxide plant. Certainly. So um, uh, basically, almost all systems go, uh, except we're going to have to complete a DFS and then and then raise the capital. Um, uh, you've been a, a long term believer in this project. Uh, uh, we first talked to you about three years ago uh, when uh, the lithium price was nowhere near as attractive as, it, as it's, it's been at the at, at the moment. How did you feel going through that dip we had in, in lithium over the, the last couple of years? Oh, look, uh, in, in our game, uh, no matter what mineral, you've got to be patient. Um, I've got another company that had to suffer through two or three years of low iron ore prices, and all of a sudden it shot up uh, last year. So, look, you've got to be very patient. Uh, we knew it was a very good deposit. Uh, the advantages that we've got far outweigh every other uh, restriction. Uh, and the restriction I mean is the the amount of drilling that was done by the Austrian government in finding this deposit uh, was a restriction for us because we had to go out back and re-drill uh, certain areas to get our jork number up. But um, but being patient, um, I founded this asset myself in 2012. So I've been involved almost nine years now. So it's a long, long burn for us, but now it's accelerated. And uh, with the prices where it is now, we have no problem uh, raising the finance. And we're talking about 450 million US to build both the hydroxide and the concentration plant. Certainly. So it's a, it's a big spend. And I mean, one, one final question, obviously a lot of investors are going to be concerned about the uh, ESG component here, as is the, uh, the, the, the state of Austria as well. Um, uh, what kind of extra hoops have you had to jump through to make sure that this is fully compliant with the best practice on ESG? Yeah, look, uh, very, very good question. Uh, we're uh, three quarters of the way through our ESG program now. By the time that the DFS is complete, we will have our full ESG uh, certificate, uh, both. Uh, and it's difficult for us because we're an Australian company, so we've got to comply here uh, in Australia, but we also got to comply with the EU rules. So we're going to be very, very strict uh, in our um, application of the ESG, but we'll, we believe we'll have our full certificate before the DFS is complete in March. All right. Well, Tony Sage, well done what, to, for what you and the team have managed to achieve at Wolfsburg. Uh, we're looking forward to a really great outcome, so keep up the good work. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>